It's official. Cassettes are dead. So I ran a poll on my channel. I asked the question to hi-fi enthusiasts and audiophiles, and of course the pro audio viewers of my channel. When you're having a serious listening session, what is your source? The multiple choice answers were streaming or digital download, vinyl, CD or other digital disc media, cassette or YouTube slash TikTok slash SoundCloud or similar. The results are stark. The clear winner, well, clear by a full one percentage point, is streaming. Streaming. But what's in second place, again, by a mere one percent? Is it vinyl, CD, cassette or YouTube? CD. It's CD. That would be the compact disc format first released in 1982 that everyone thinks is dead. So we have streaming in the lead at 37%, CD in second place by a nose at 36%, but that leaves quite a few percents left behind. I'll just eliminate YouTube etc. right now, because I don't think that anyone would imagine it, along with TikTok, SoundCloud etc., being a serious contender for the serious listening crown. So it's down to vinyl versus cassette, which got 23% of the vote, which got a mere, a pathetic, 2%. Vinyl. Vinyl received 23% of the vote, compared to streaming's 37%. It's some way behind, but not as far as I might have thought. But cassette. 2%. Clearly, the cassette format is well and truly dead. Well and truly, according to my poll. There is, of course, a glaring problem here. It's called participation bias. And you can look that up on Wikipedia for more details. But basically, it's where the participants in any survey or trial tend to self-select according to their established interests. So, if someone publishes a survey whether pigeon fanciers should receive better pay and conditions, the result will be yes, they should, because most of the participants will be pigeon fanciers. No one else is interested. So I'd probably think that very few viewers of my channel are cassette lovers, or cassette fanciers, if that's a thing. So naturally the response for that format is very low. It might have to do with my video slagging off cassettes. The cassette revival so wrong on so many levels. Link in the description. Now before anyone suggests I'm on a bit of a high horse regarding cassettes, well firstly, I've never been on a horse. Maybe a donkey as a child, but that's as far as I'm prepared to go on that. But on cassettes, well, back before CD was invented, they had very practical uses. I would be far from the only person back in the day to buy vinyl records and copy them to cassette for listening, so that I could always hear the music without the inevitable clicks, pops and surface noise. I say that in the full knowledge that I'll be flamed in the comments, but hey. And for music makers, the cassette was a fantastic format for Tascam to base their Porter Studio around, and Fostex their multi-trackers. And to make demos to hawk to label a and managers and music publishing professional managers. I did that loads, too. But today, what's the point in cassette? I can see the point in vinyl. Hi-Fi used to be a fantastic hobby in the days when you could always aspire to a better system. We're at a point in technology now where, other than loudspeakers, it's never going to get any better. Well, not that anyone can hear. Comments. <laughs> but nostalgia for the old days of hi-fi is definitely a thing. And if records cost 20 or 30 great British pounds or more, well, what's not to like about that? <laughs> cassette, though. Going back to what I would say is the heyday of cassette in the late 70s and very early 80s, cassettes were always inferior to vinyl. Let me count the ways. Yes, you could copy a record to cassette, as I said earlier. That was a valid use of the cassette format. But the cassette would never sound as good as the first few playings of the vinyl. Vinyl has a better signal-to-noise ratio by about 10 decibels. And unless you could afford a Nakamichi cassette deck, it had a better high-frequency response. You could buy albums on cassette, just as you could on vinyl. High-speed duplicating was never going to be hi-fi. Good enough to get by for the casual music lover? Yes, there was real-time duplication, but still the sound quality wasn't as good as vinyl. Vinyl has its inevitable degradations over time, but how often did people clean, demagnetize, and align their cassette decks? Most people never. That's why they left the Dolby switched off on playback. 
so that they could get back some of the high frequencies that were blocked by the dirt on the head. <laughs> well, those are the negatives. I suppose I should say that portable cassette players were a thing. I don't think there ever was a record player that you could play while you were out jogging, although you could get one for your car. <laughs> oh yes, I suppose I should also say that in-car cassette players were probably a significant factor in cassette sales. I nearly said significant consumer of cassettes because that was something that happened fairly often. That's enough about me and about the participants in my survey. What matters most are the people who spend money on music formats. Do people spend their actual hard-earned inflation-prone money on cassettes? I have some data. I'm reading from a blog post made April 2023 by the British Phonographic Industry, or BPI, which is like the RIAA in the USA. Here are some highlights. On 10 occasions last year, the format accounted for over 10% of the chart sales of the number one album on the weekly official albums chart. Some of these chart-topping albums sold more copies on cassette than on vinyl when they debuted at number one. Cassette sales grew to 195,000 in 2022, a level not seen since before Apple launched its iTunes Music Download Store in the UK. Every one of the top 10 cassette sellers in 2022 was released in 2022. OK, Betty is paraphrasing a bit, but you can read the post for yourself. Link in the description. The most surprising thing for me is that the top sellers last year were released last year. So cassette buyers are buying new music and are presumably, therefore, young people. OK, there were a couple of re-releases of old music, but have any of you old-timers out there heard of Jamie T, Nux, Blossoms? No, me neither. Those poor young people, they could be listening to high-quality, high-fidelity sound on CD or streaming. Yet they bought cassette. As an old-timer myself, I feel motivated to say, what's wrong with the world? <laughs> But mostly when that's ever said, it's because of change and new stuff happening. This is old stuff. Old time stuff that should be dead and buried and turned into fossil fuel for my diesel car. OK, I don't have a conclusion, but I suspect my interest in the cassette format may continue. I won't be buying any, though. As a 23-year-old person I consulted said, no one's buying them. No normal people anyway. See you soon.